Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Affirmation Addict podcast. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about asking for help. This is something I have actually really struggled with for a long time, and I finally figured it out, and I realized how much it affects my relationship with not only myself, but with people around me, the universe, and just my overall peace of mind. So I hope you enjoy this episode. You're listening to the Affirmation Addict Podcast with Pyle Agarwal. This podcast will teach you about the power of affirmations while making manifestation easy and accessible for you in order to enhance your spiritual consciousness. Thank you so, so much for being here, and I'm so excited to dive into today's episode. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Affirmation Addict Podcast. I'm so happy you're here. And today I'm going to be diving into asking for help. I want to dive into something I personally learned about asking for help and what that looks and feels like. Something I realize when manifesting can feel really confusing because even me, I will say things like, okay, it's all about the power within you. It's all about you. And it starts to feel like everything is totally up to you. And it can feel overwhelming. And I actually fell into that myself. And I realized that I was so unsure who I could ask for help or how to even ask for help that I started to just feel a bigger and bigger burden on myself, which kind of hurt the relationship I had with myself. I started to feel more doubtful. I started to feel less sure of my decisions. I stopped listening to my intuition and I noticed it having a ripple effect because when you do a lot of manifestation work or healing work, a lot of the times it seems like it's all from within you. And that burden and that pressure can sometimes really be heavy to hold. And I know I don't talk about this enough because I struggled with it myself. So I'm sharing this for you based off of something I learned in my own kind of journey over the past couple of months. As you guys know, I'm coming back to the podcast. I'm just updating you on all the things. And this is one of the biggest things I realized. I was so kind of focused on just my day-to-day, my routines, my rituals that I realized I hadn't had my own kind of way to ask for help in my spiritual journey in a long time. And so what I mean by this is normally I give myself once a month, I give myself the opportunity to do a mental check-in and say, Hey, do I want to go to one of my healers? I have so many different healers in my life, such as people who will do Reiki, people who will do tarot card readings, just mentors and people who I look up to who help me because I really believe we all need help. And that's not because we're not good enough. I think it's just because people in our lives are meant to share with us a different perspective, share with us something. They're like our messengers, right? And so it's kind of this reverse way of thinking about it that that person may be in your life to teach you something that you needed to hear from a third party versus yourself. It's kind of that reverse thinking. And this doesn't mean that you're any less of a manifester or you're any less of a person because you need help. But I realized that I didn't for, I think it was six months. I didn't do any healing sessions for myself. I think I maybe did one in the middle, but it wasn't even for myself. It was for Tom and I didn't even do anything for myself. And just last week I was like, I feel like I haven't done this in a while. Let me just pick back up. And um, I was on the phone with one of the girls who helps me heal things and just gives me different perspectives and helps me out. And I was talking to her and she was like, your energy is so not you right now. Your energy is not your own. It doesn't feel like you. And I really think it's because we haven't talked in such a long time, not because I'm doing anything, but she was saying because you weren't giving yourself that ability to ask for help and get guidance and receive from the universe in whichever way that is. And that was such a mind blowing thing for me because truly for me to feel back to normal, it took us eight healing sessions. I never do eight healing sessions in one go. We literally were on the phone. I think it was for four days 
two hours a day or three hours a day. It was crazy and so much longer and so much more um, intense than my usual because I didn't ask for help. I didn't focus on myself for those past six months that I was so focused on external work that I kind of dropped all my internal work. I kind of dropped the little things I did to maintain and keep myself going and it really showed and I didn't think so. I felt fine internally. I felt fine on the inside. I was happy. It was more just to check in and things that I didn't even know came up to the surface. And all of this is to share that asking for help is truly an act of self-love and it's an act of self-care. Now I, you can do this on a spiritual level. So like I'm talking about, I have like a Reiki lady. I have someone who helps read cards. I have all those types of mediums and people in my life who I lean on because that helps me keep my cup full. However, those aren't the only people who I work with to ask for my own help. I also ask for help in my team and my business. Two years ago, I was a one woman show. I did everything on my own in my business from editing the podcast, publishing the podcast, posting on Instagram, launching, emailing my courses, customer support. I did everything. And now I have amazing, amazing people on my team who I'm able to lean on and ask for help. And not only does that help them in a way of growing economically and also just having a great relationship with them, but it also helps me because by giving them certain things, I'm able to free up more energetic space for myself. So that's a more physical way of, or a more kind of career oriented way of asking for help is having people help you out. Whether you have your own business, you're working at a job, asking your coworkers, asking people around you for help, asking your boss for guidance. If you need it, you know, a lot of the times we kind of get into this kind of self isolated tunnel vision mode. And I don't even know what to call it. And I don't know what triggers it because I mean, it happened to me just a little bit ago and I had no idea why or what made it happen. And so I really wanted to share that with you that Asking for help is seriously such an act of self-care. It's such an act of self-love and a way of giving yourself permission to lean. It's a way of getting vulnerable, I think. And the reason I think this is so transformational is because when we ask for help, we're basically giving a signal to ourselves and the universe saying, hey, I accept that I don't know everything or I can't do everything on my own and I'm willing to receive. It's truly a way of showing the universe and showing yourself that you are open to receiving. Help doesn't mean you're incapable. Help doesn't mean you're any lesser than. Help just means you're receiving and it's a form of abundance. If you can get guidance, if you can get mentorship, if you can get healing from someone, if you can get some time back by asking someone for help or paying someone for help. And I think that's such a beautiful way of thinking about asking for help. And even if it's not a person that you're asking for help, there are so many other ways that you can help yourself in your life. And I'm kind of going on a tangent. Um, as you guys know, none of my episodes are ever scripted out. I really just hop on my mic and talk. And so what's really coming to me right now is another way of getting help is by subscribing to certain products or services or subscriptions that really aid you. And for me, one of the biggest things, which is why I created it is my app. And I'm totally not plugging it, but the app is one of those things that I can say is created in order to help you manifest. For example, on a totally different note, something that I've been really working with and Tom and I both is I realize I don't cook at home enough because because we get so busy working or it's just, it takes a lot of energy and mental space. I love cooking at home, but right now my energy field didn't have the capacity to do so. So I was like, what's the solution? So we found HelloFresh, Purple Carrot. Those types of meal delivery services literally help me out because they bring food to me. They deliver it to me. I don't have to think about what to cook. I literally just, not mindlessly, but without planning and thinking about flavors, I am just following instructions and I'm cooking and I'm hanging out with Tom and we're doing it together, but we're not, we take out the component that pushed it away for both of us. And it worked out so well that it was such a beautiful way of us helping 
a problem that was in our life. And it was such a little problem, um, but we found a solution. So I think what I'm really trying to say with this episode is getting comfortable being resourceful, whether that's asking for help from the universe and just letting whatever comes your way, coming into your life through an abundance, through guidance from a friend, through a message you needed to see, or asking for different solutions. I mean, everybody has an app or a service or a subscription model for something or the other. So are you willing to ask for help and not expect to receive it for free? That is one of the biggest things I wanted to share today is when we think of the word help or assistance, we, I don't know where this comes from. It might be for me, an Indian thing where when you're helping someone out, it's always for free, right? It's always, you're just giving someone out of the kindness of your heart, which I think is amazing. However, when you're seeking out help, are you willing to exchange something for it, right? Because truly everything comes down to an energy exchange. Energy exchange can mean money. It can mean time. It can mean doing something back for the other person. Energy exchange must exist in order to have something happen. And so if you think about it, for example, my sister-in-law, a few weeks ago, she was moving. Um, She's not going to pay me or pay me and Tom to help her move, obviously. But what was our energy exchange with that, right? So let's dive into it. We drove over to her house, helped her move for four hours. So if she didn't pay us, that's not part of it. But maybe there's an energy exchange of she was really nice to us and maybe bought us food or maybe not even at that level. Maybe it's an energy exchange of a past life where it was part of our karmic debt to give her some of our time. And maybe she's given us her time in the past and that's why we're giving it. So realizing that everything in this universe is sort of in an energy exchange, whether you see it right now or you don't. And so where I'm coming from with asking for help is is a lot of the times subconsciously we expect that help to be free and we get really frustrated when that help isn't free. And I've experienced this in my DMs all the time where people get a little frustrated with me where they're like, well, why can't you give your guidance for free? And I'm like, well, I've spent my entire life learning this and developing this and creating this where I need some sort of energy exchange. And that's my energy exchange is a couple bucks in terms of the app subscription. For example, with coaching, that's a different energy exchange for people. And me, I don't have anybody in my life who I don't pay if I'm seeking out help, whether it's paying it forward through gratitude, through time, through energy, through anything, there's always a way to pay it forward. And I think that's a big thing when it comes to asking for help. For some reason, help seems to be something out of the kindness of your heart, which I do believe it can be. But I think from a perspective of help where it truly makes a difference, I have firmly believed that the energy you put into it is what you get out of it. So if I'm expecting someone to just help me out and tell me something that will change my life for free, do I think it'll actually change my life? To be honest, No, I don't think so. I don't think there's enough of my own energy invested. So for some people, they need to put in a lot of money to receive that. For some people, they need to put in a lot of time to receive that guidance or to receive some sort of help. For some people, it's to put in a lot of energy of some sort. And so getting comfortable with when you're asking for help, it is an act of self-love, but it's an even bigger act of self-love when you're willing to truly honor the energy exchange of whatever that help is because that's a reflection of you. The money that's being asked or anything is not a reflection of what's being asked of them. It's what's being asked of you. So remember that because I've had people who will tell me, Pyle, your coaching is way too expensive because that's a reflection of where they are financially, but they're not thinking of what will come out of it from a different perspective. But I also have people, my own clients and my own team members who are like, your coaching is way underpriced for what you offer. And that's from the lens they're looking at it. So realizing that money and the energy exchange of money is just a reflection of your relationship with money. If you think something is too expensive, that's a reflection of your relationship. It's not a reflection of the person who's charging that. And so being okay with taking responsibility for how you feel with certain energy exchanges. For example, let's go back to the meal delivery kit thing. 
there was one subscription that felt too expensive for me. So I didn't opt in for that one because it didn't feel worth it for what they were offering, but a different one offered less, but it felt more worth it for what my needs were and what I was willing to spend in my own energy. So I went with a different one. So it's kind of like being comfortable, being self-aware enough to know that not all help will be for you, but knowing that help is available out there and giving yourself permission to ask for help, but also also giving yourself and whoever is helping you enough respect to honor the energy exchange that comes with help. Because to be honest, what is it? Just because it's not a physical product doesn't mean someone's not investing in energy or time or healing or who knows what. There's so many things that we can't see to the surface that we think that just because I can't touch it means it should be free. And that's a really interesting mindset that we have. And I know it's shifting with the digital age. And so that's where I really wanted to come from with help because I was like, well, I don't need it. I don't need to talk to my healers. I don't need to talk to the people I talk to every month. No biggie. Let me wait. And then I waited six months and I had to do eight sessions to get back to where I was and maybe a little bit higher than where I am now. And so it's so interesting that when you push off help and you push it off because you don't think it's worth it, that you're actually pushing yourself off. And that's my biggest thing I wanted to share with you is being comfortable, giving yourself permission to ask for help and also giving yourself permission to receive help and honor that energy exchange. I think the energy exchange of service Services and time just because it's unseen does not mean it's not worthy of an energy exchange. And so give yourself permission and give yourself that worthiness to remember that you're worthy of this help, even if you have to pay for it. It doesn't mean that it's not for you. It just means that that's your energy exchange with the person who's providing that help. And I think it's a really beautiful way to think about it because I've had this feeling too, where I'm resistant to coaching or a program or a course, but now that I'm in that same boat, I've truly finally understand where it's coming from and what that person is offering me and how much they're putting into it. I'm giving them some sort of compensation for all that they're doing for me. And I think that's truly fair. And I think that's such a beautiful way. So I know we went and talked about a lot of different things in this episode. And I just wanted to recap with the power of asking for help doesn't mean that you're not good enough as you are. It means that you're comfortable getting uncomfortable and you're ready to show the universe and show yourself that, hey, I am ready to receive, whether that's guidance, abundance, knowledge, ease, something in your life that you're willing to receive. And it might not be only through you. You might need the energy of some other person or service to help you accomplish that goal of yours. And that's not a bad thing. So give yourself permission to invest not only in yourself from a place of love, but also from a place of your finances. Don't be afraid to invest in yourself when it feels right, because you're worthy of that help and of that support that you need for that time in your life. So I hope this episode was helpful. It was something that was so transformative for me to remember to, you know what, pay for that one month and do it every single month, because if you don't do it, it will most likely just add up and you'll have to spend a lot more time in the future. So that was my learning lesson from today's episode is, you know what, those things that really make a difference for me, whether it's a monthly ritual with myself, a monthly ritual for me asking the universe for help or something I already have, like an app subscription or a coach who I talk to once a month, giving myself the permission to actually stick to that with no guilt, with no shame, with only love because it really has changed my life. And I really hope it does the same for you. And I hope this episode really helped you kind of clear up some of the kind of, I don't know, chaotic energy around this energy of asking for help and paying for help and how that all plays into manifestation. So I really hope this is helpful and thank you for spending some time with me. I'm so, so happy you're here. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. So how did you like today's episode? I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed recording it. And before you leave, I wanted to just say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for spending some time with me. If this episode or any of my content has ever inspired you, it would mean the absolute world to me if you could leave a review in the iTunes podcast app and just share this with someone you care about. The more you guys leave reviews and share this with people, the more I am able to create more content for you. And that's what fuels me and keeps me going. 
I am so genuinely grateful for the time we shared today. And until next time, I'm sending you lots of love and lots of healing energy. Bye.